Welcome to this online service from Christchurch Forward. My name is Paul Williams and whether this is your first time joining us or you've been with us many times before, you are very welcome. If you've not joined us before, let me tell you that the words for the songs that we'll sing will appear on your screen so that you can join in if you want to. Families have already met together on Zoom and they've been thinking about Psalm 42 as we will be in our time together. In a moment, we'll get a little glimpse into what they've been discovering. But before that, we're going to sing together. And this morning, the Holm family are going to be leading us in our singing. So come, people of the risen King, rejoice.
God, we thank you for your wondrous gospel of grace. As we come before you this morning, we praise you that in Christ, you've given us new birth into a living hope that can never perish, spoil or fade. Lord, we thank you that you are always good. That in this broken world, where hard things come at us and bad things come out of us, you remain utterly faithful. In all the changing seasons of life, Lord, whether we feel happy or sad, full or empty, excited or defeated, you have promised and remain totally committed to getting your children to our eternal home with you. Father, how we long for that day when we will see you face to face 
when our souls will be finally at rest because we will be like Jesus and totally captivated by him, our hope, our Lord and our Saviour. Father, we are sorry that we don't love you like we should. Please forgive us for putting our hope in places other than you. Forgive us when we have not trusted your plans for us, for times we've been impatient and irritable because we don't like the situation you've put us in. Forgive us for times when we've shut you out and simply lived to please ourselves and haven't managed to care for others. Father, we are sorry. Draw us back, we pray. In your mercy, keep us close to you. Through the true things that are said and sung this morning in this service, help each one of us to rejoice again in the glorious access we have to you, the source of all light and life and love through our Lord Jesus. Amen. Sovereign Lord, in a world gripped by this current coronavirus pandemic, we look to our leaders for guidance and wisdom. Please help them. We look to scientists and medical professionals for protection and a cure. Please help them. But as Christians, Lord, we look to you, our sovereign God. We know that the times and dates, the reach and impact of this virus on each of our lives are ultimately in your hands. Please grow us in a trust and humble dependence of you. Prompt us to use these unsettled times to point others to you too. Amen. Lord of the Nations, we pray this morning for our mission partner, Rachel Olney, working with OM in Vienna. We thank you, Lord, for Rachel's amazing musical talent. Thank you for the various opportunities she has had in recent work weeks to use her gifts to reach students with the gospel message through music and follow-up conversations. Please would you bring each of those who Rachel has pursued to a personal saving faith in Jesus. Thank you for the encouragement and support Rachel receives from the Bible study group she attends at the Music University. Please guide her as she makes plans for the summer and please help her as she tries to come up with a more focused strategy for her work next year. Keep her close to you, Father, both in private prayer and rich times in your word, we pray. Amen. Lord of the Church, we want to pray for our partner church at Holy Cross this morning in Gleadless Valley, run by David Middleton. Thank you for the many ways you've sustained that church family through these last months of not being able to meet together in person, especially through their recent sermon series in the Book of Ruth. Thank you too, Lord, for the fruitful ministry of Anna de Castro as their family's worker these last seven years. We ask that you would provide in your mercy a suitable replacement in that crucial role. And as they partner with local community projects over the school holidays, would you give the people of Holy Cross Church family a love for their neighbours and their community so that good connections are established to support their more gospel focused outreach events planned for September. Amen. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. These have been strange times indeed, as we have had to get used to connecting with one another in very different ways. Thank you for the, the care given and received in this church family. Please keep us growing in love of you and love for one another. Please keep us listening well to one another. Give us the ability to understand the many different challenges these past few months have presented to each one. And as lockdown begins to ease, would we be wise and careful as we start to gather again? There will be many things for each of us that we are now impatient to see resolved. Matters of work, finances, health, relationships, family gatherings and even holidays. Lord, we ask, would you meet us in our longings? Would you help us to keep trusting you, to be willing to wait on your timings, and as we are taught from Psalm 42 this morning, would we be those who learn to cry out to you in our longings, to pour out our souls to you, and to find true and lasting hope in you alone. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
The Lord is our rock and our redeemer. And we're going to turn to that same God who is our rock as we turn to the Bible and read Psalm 42. If you have a Bible, you might like to pick it up now. And in a moment, I'm going to read it. But first, let me pray for us. Heavenly Fathers, we turn to your word, the Bible. We pray that you would speak to us and that you would encourage us and that very especially you would equip us to cope with all the difficult times of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. 
My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony and my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. I'm just getting a bit fed up with it all now. That's what one person said to me this week as we were talking about life and coming out of lockdown. Another person said to me, I'm thankful for Zoom calls, but I I want to meet people in the flesh and not on a screen. Someone else said, I just want to get back to normal. I'm trying to be positive. Every day I'm counting my blessings. I've not been ill. I I have a job. My family are well. I, I have a lovely home. We have food on the table every day. I am grateful. But this all seems to have been going on for so long now. Even as many restrictions have been lifted in these last few weeks, the realisation that it's going to be a long time before we return to any kind of normality is leaving many people feeling cheesed off. For so many, it's much more than an inconvenience, though. Despite the Chancellor's best efforts in the recent budget, people are worried about their financial future, many concerned about losing their jobs, graduates wondering if they'll ever find a job. Then there are those who are shielding. They've been isolated for months now. And with talk of a winter wave of coronavirus being much worse than we saw in April, how difficult to think of that isolation continuing for months to come. And of course, desperately, people continue to die. Not in the numbers we saw back in April, but honestly, if you're the one bereaved, that is little comfort. And then away from the virus, we're rightly having to face up to the systemic racism that resulted in the appalling death of George Floyd. Racism that has been plaguing society, not just for decades, but for centuries. One way and another, these are hard days. And I don't know how you feel about it all, but one person put it very simply when they said to me this week, roll on eternity. Living in this broken and tottering world should give us a greater longing for the new creation and being in the presence of God, finally, fully, and forever. And that is the overwhelming desire of the psalmist in Psalm 42. Quite simply, he wants God. Look at verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? This is both a desperate cry and a wonderful one. It is desperate as verses 1 and 2 picture a wild deer in a time of extreme drought, in a dry and arid land. There's no water anyway. The poor animal flagging, going from one water hole to another, finds nothing. It is desperate to find a stream, gasping for fresh running water. Finding water is literally a matter of life and death for the deer. And the psalmist says, verse 1, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. He can't live without God. It's a desperate cry, but it's also a wonderful one. For this should surely be the deep desire and longing of every Christian. Whether we're enjoying life or enduring life, we should long for God. Uh, We were made for him. We should wake up every day longing to read our Bible and spend time with our Lord in prayer. We should pant for those times of sweet communion with our God. I was talking to somebody only last week. They are going through a really tough time at the moment. They are carrying a very great burden right now. The future for them is very uncertain. I asked them how they were coping. And they said to me, spending time with the Lord each day is the most precious time. My daily time of Bible reading and prayer gives me relief from everything else going on in my life right now. Being with our God in his presence should be our deepest longing. The psalmist sees it as a matter of life and death. But sometimes we have to go through really difficult times to feel that. As we read on, we'll see that the psalmist was going through a really tough time. 
Tim Keller, in his book on prayer, describes a time in his life nearly 20 years ago now. He was living in New York during the terrorist attacks of September the 11th, 2001. He describes the whole city as falling into a kind of corporate clinical depression. And that feeling was intensified for the Keller family as his wife, Kathy, was struggling with the effects of Crohn's disease. And then Tim Keller himself was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And as they went through all this, his wife asked him to do something that they'd never managed to do regularly in their marriage. She asked him to pray with her every night. He writes, she said something like this. Imagine you were diagnosed with such a lethal condition that the doctor told you that you would die within hours unless you took a particular medicine, a pill every night before going to sleep. Imagine that you were told that you could never miss it or you would die. Would you forget? Would you not get around to it some nights? No, it would be so crucial that you wouldn't forget. You would never miss. Well, if we don't pray together to God, we're not going to make it because of all we're facing. I'm certainly not, she said. We have to pray. We can't let it just slip our minds. That's what the psalmist feels. He feels that he cannot survive without the living God. For him, it's like a deer needing water. It's a matter of life and death. And while that longing is desperate, it's also a wonderful and right experience. Let's be honest. While that should be every believer's longing, it won't be. Not all the time. For most of us, not even most of the time. And that's why it's often only when we experience a drought in our lives that we have this kind of thirst for God. I'll never forget something someone said to me as they left my study some years back. I'd been meeting with this person regularly as they were going through such an immense personal struggle. And as they walked out of my study, I said to them, I'm so sorry that you're having to cope with all this. And they said to me, I'd never have asked for this in my life, but I am thankful for it. I'd have called myself a Christian before all this started, but it's through this struggle that I've really come to know the Lord. He really is everything to me now. That's how the psalmist felt as he wrote this psalm. God is everything to him, but he feels cut off from God. It, it seems he's in some kind of exile. The geography of verse 6 suggests that he's in the extreme north of Israel, far from Judah and Jerusalem, far from being able to meet with God's people in the temple and he feels desperate verse 3 my tears have been my food day and night while people say to me all day long where is your god he is a grown man and all day long he's fighting back the tears it seems he's surrounded by unbelievers people who say to him end of verse 3 where is your god you might well have had that kind of experience being said to you in these last days People look at the state of the world, they question God's existence. If God is powerful and all-loving, he'd stop all this misery. Where is your God? Where's God in a global pandemic? Now, that is a tough question to engage with at any time, but it's all the harder when you don't have the encouragement of meeting with God's people. And that's the case for the psalmist, verse 4. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. He's far from Jerusalem and unable to go to the temple and unable to meet with God's people. And in verse 4, he wistfully remembers the shouts of joy and praise that so lifted his heart when God's people met together. And don't we feel the same right now? Someone texted me last Sunday, we miss being together with church family so much. Like the psalmist, we miss meeting with, each, with other believers. That said, we, we do have to be careful here. The psalmist longed to go to the temple. And this building is not the temple. The temple was the place where, we could, where people would go to meet with God through sacrifice. For us today, Jesus is the temple. It is in Jesus that we meet God through sacrifice. We don't go to a building to meet God. But then the psalmist knew that. Even through this psalm, even though he was far from the temple, throughout the psalm he's praying. The psalmist knew that the sacrifices at the temple gave him access to God. But living in exile and surrounded by enemies of God, how he longed to be with God and with God's people. 
Now again, that is precisely how we feel, or how we should feel. One day, through Jesus' sacrifice, our exile will end and we'll be brought fully into the presence of God. We should long for that day. But while we wait for that day, when we'll finally and fully and forever be with God in the heavenly new Jerusalem, now, while we wait, meeting with God's people is meant to give us a little taste of what it will be like then. Standing here now, I can remember so many wonderful times when this place was packed and we were singing praises to God. It was a little taste of heaven. How we miss it. The songs of praise and the joy of being with each other as we listen to God's word together. Here then is the psalmist in a broken world, feeling cut off from God, thirsty for God as he was surrounded by accusing unbelievers and, and, and unable to meet with God's people. And he feels wretched. Three times he says, my soul is downcast. It comes in verse 5, verse 6, and in verse 11. My soul is downcast. Literally, it could be translated, my soul prostrates itself. He feels flat. He has no enthusiasm for anything. The things he used to look forward to don't excite him anymore. And the joy of life has been squeezed out of him. And on top of feeling flat, he's also churned up inside in verse 5 and in verse 11 he talks about being disturbed within this pandemic has left many people feeling like that flat and joyless churned up inside that's how the psalmist feels and worst of all he feels a million miles from god so look what he does in verse 5 why my soul are you downcast why so disturbed within me put your hope in god for i will yet praise him my savior and my god this is clearly the big takeaway from this psalm because we see exactly the same words in verse 11. See what the psalmist does here in verse 5 and verse 11. He gives himself a good talking to. He talks to his soul. He preaches to himself. He takes himself in hand. This is like waking up in the morning and even though you feel like pulling the duvet over your head to avoid all the struggles of life, instead you say to yourself, Paul, why are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed? Uh, of course, you know the answer. I feel downcast and disturbed because I feel far from God, because I'm surrounded by mocking unbelievers, because I can't meet with God's people. You know the answer to the question, but before you give yourself a chance to answer, you tell yourself, verse 5, put your hope in God. The psalmist speaks to himself. They say that talking to yourself is the first sign of madness. But here it is in the Bible. And if we can learn to tell ourselves the right things, far from it being a sign of madness, it can be one of the best ways to remain sane. When you feel low because of life's circumstances and you feel far from God, don't allow your feelings to dictate how you feel. Tell yourself great biblical truths. Tell yourself, verse 5, to put your hope in God. Don't put your hope in the world getting sorted. Don't put your hope in your circumstances changing. Don't put your hope in someone coming into your life to sort everything out for you. Because while those things might happen, they might not. And they're never permanent. No, put your hope in God. Trust in the sure and certain hope that one day you will be with him in eternity, praising him. That's verse 5, I will praise him yet. There's our hope. A day is coming when we will again be gathered together. Not, not in this building, but gathered around God's throne with all the believers from every age and every tongue and language and nation and tribe. One day we'll be in the presence of him who is on the throne, praising our Saviour and our God. That day will come, and that is the day to look towards. So ask yourself the question, why, my soul, are you downcast? And then tell yourself the answer. Put your hope in the God who is your saviour, the one who will bring you to a day of unending praise. The psalmist talks to himself. And then he talks to God, verse 6. My soul is downcast within, within me, therefore I remember you, God, from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. He talks to God even though he's far from the temple. And he talks to God even as he feels overwhelmed, verse 7. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. 
he feels as if he's drowning. Life is so overwhelming, he can barely keep his head above water. But he knows that God is his hope, and so he prays. And his prayer is there in verse 8. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. That's his prayer. It's in stark contrast to verse 3, where he was crying day and night. Now he asks God to replace his tears with a daily assurance of the Lord's loving kindness directing him during the day and enabling him to praise God at night. And his prayer continues in verse 9. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? There it is again. He prays that he won't feel forgotten by God. And he prays that he won't allow the taunting of his enemies to leave him walking around all day as if he's, He's somewhat, as if someone has just died. And isn't that first line of verse 9 arresting? I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? The psalmist says to God, you're my rock. You're supposed to be the completely immovable and totally reliable thing in my life, the rock. But it seems to me right now that the rock has disappeared, that you've forgotten me, and so I'm sinking. When God is everything to you, it is desperate when it feels as if he's not there. This is very real, because it does feel like that sometimes. But listen, suffering as the psalmist did is the normal Christian experience. So you look again at verses 9 and 10 and ask who or, or what it reminds you of. See, it reminds me of Jesus and his experience on earth and especially on the cross. Apparently forgotten by God, oppressed by the enemy, physically suffering mortal agony he could feel it it as if his bones in his bones his foes taunted him this is what jesus experienced and as those who follow in his footsteps this is what we'll experience too this is the normal christian life sharing in the sufferings of christ and so this psalm tells us that when we do experience this we must learn to talk to god about it and then to talk to ourselves about it See, there it is again in verse 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. It's exactly the same as verse 5, and we'll see it again next week at the end of Psalm 43. So if you're struggling this week, when you struggle in the future, in all the struggles of life, and especially when you feel far from God and his people, and you feel flat and churned up, and when you feel desperate for God, give yourself a good talking to. Tell yourself to put your hope in God and not to put your trust in anything or anyone else. And know that as you trust in him, he will yet bring you to praise him in glory. Jesus has died for you, and so there will be a day when you'll finally, fully, and forever be with God. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we pray that we would be like the psalmist, thirsting for you. We pray that when we feel downcast and disturbed and far from you, when we feel as if there are enemies around us and when we're separated from God's people, we pray we turn to you, but also that we give ourselves a good talking to, that we tell ourselves to put our hope in you and in the great future hope of spending all eternity with you one day, free from all these struggles, and we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Well, we're going to sing one more time, and we're going to sing, You Alone Can Rescue.
up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. Thanks for joining us this morning for this online service. While our small groups are not formally meeting over these summer weeks, there are discussion questions on the website if you want to think further about Psalm 42. There's also a family's worksheet available on the website. After this service, there's a Zoom call at 11.45 for Pathfinders to meet together. If you're not part of the church family yet, please make contact with us. Go to the website, click on the Looking for Answers page, and at the bottom there's a Looking to Connect form. If you complete that form, we'll get back in touch with you. Now as we close, let's pray. Now may the Lord who hears your cry when your heart is faint continue to be the rock beneath you, the shelter above you, and the strong tower around you until Jesus comes. Amen.